I'm Stephanie Straw with Board Game Geek here with Richard Lanius, and we are going to be looking at an upper deck release, uh, Shark Island. Da da da. Yeah, it's insert Jaws. Insert Jaws <laughs> theme yeah. in the background. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this, uh, what's yeah, what's going on here? We've got a DM screen here. Are we and are we getting to be a shark? If you're behind the screen, you are the shark. So this is a game for myself and Pete Shirey. And uh, if anybody knows Pete, he loves sharks, okay? So uh, he started telling me about an idea he had for a game, and uh, I, I took one look at it, and I said, look, you know, I think you're going way too big. We need to shrink this down, have a lot of action. Who's you know, jumping really, the shark? Yeah, really make it fun <laughs> to where people are finding the shark, fighting the shark. So we worked together and, and built this game, and I think what's come out is, is really fantastic. So. The basis of the game is that one player is actually going to play the shark, and you get yourself a great white shark, and it'll start with hit points. One of them going to be facing us. All right. Which way do you want? That way? Yeah. Okay. It'll be starting with hit points established by the number of players that's going against it. So okay. this is one against many, one player getting to be the shark, everybody else trying to hunt and kill the shark. Okay. Now the shark, the shark has evil intent also, well, because it is one of my games, so. He is a killing machine, he, it says here. He, absolutely, his ability is a killing machine. So this establishes his hit points, it establishes his fight ability, it also establishes his base starting fins. So he starts with three fins, and one of them represents him, the one with uh, the person shaking a fist at the shark fin there, okay? And then the other two are just basic things that can be confusing if you see it in the water. Uh, and then he's got a special ability right over here. So the shark player operates behind the screen, he's got all the information, basically that'll show him the different phases of the game, how he can spend his shark tokens to do special things. He earns those from the players as the game goes on. Okay, good. He starts with a couple. And then when you get into battle, what the special cards do as far as the shark's concerned. He's mostly concerned about the shark card because that's where he gets to do a lot of that's damage to, to, to yeah, he gets to do a lot of damage to the players. So the players themselves will each take an iconic role. You know, they're either going to be the salvage diver, the oceanographer, the island sheriff. Uh, I think there's five to six characters coming to the game, so you have a mix and match. You know, even the helicopter yeah. who's searching for him. I think in, you know, you saw that in, in movie two or three where he actually pulls that helicopter out of the sky. That's a yeah. good jump for a shark, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, and what the shark's trying to do is create terror. And the shark player at the beginning of the game considers how he's going to terrorize this small island town, okay, right off our coast. Mm -hmm. So he's either going to try to turn it into a ghost town by just constantly attacking the tourist and fishing industry. Uh, he's going to try to force it to reach national press uh, so that uh, basically it becomes sensationalized. He's going to try to get the mayor fired. <laughs> or he's trying to close all the resorts. So at the beginning, you know the, the classic shark getting the, the mayor fired. Shark, you know he doesn't have a lot of choices. Okay, <laughs> so the classic, yeah, he always wants the mayor to get fired. <laughs> so at the beginning of the game, the shark player is going to pick whichever one of these he wants to happen, and he's going to choose that one, put it behind the board. So that's secret. We don't know. That's players. secret. We don't the know shark that. knows what it is okay. because as the game goes on, he's going to terrorize the village. Okay, mm -hmm. and as he gets successes, he's going to start bringing out terror tokens. Okay. And they're going to, and I probably have shuffled fired. these. Yeah, they're going to, the mayor fired, but he has to get a whole row of them, okay? okay. So, so as the game goes on and he's terrorizing, he's causing different things to happen. But what he would like to have, and I, are we getting that on screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he'd like to happen is whichever one he's chosen for it to advance down until he ultimately has, I think it's five that actually trigger the end of the game, yeah. okay? And he wins if. The moment he has tokens out that, matches. that match this, yeah, he needs five mare fired tokens okay. uh, to win the game. So they don't know that though. So they have ways at times to manipulate this. Maybe like take one away. Take one away or exchange one or something like that. So they're so they're you know trying to figure out which one he's working yeah. toward at the same time. Yeah. But he's building this path. It's hard over to get there. in the mind of the shark. I think, it is, probably. but little by little he continues to terrorize the, the town in different ways. Yeah. Okay. So they're trying to kill him before that happens. Very for them it's simple. The shark has to die. The shark is going to die. So as the game, what happens in the game, where's my calendar cards? Oh, right calendar. here. Each turn, you're going to flip over a calendar card, and it's going to tell you uh, how many fin tokens the shark's going to get. Now, the shark starts with three fin tokens. Mm -hmm. 
And then, for example, in this one right here, he's going to draw, uh, actually this part up here tells you the islands that he's going to get. So, he's going to, in this case, we got three hunters, and I'm gonna set these out, hopefully you can see them. So these are the territories. You moving that? Yeah, let's put them here. All right. There you go. We have tight camera space here. Yeah. Okay, so in this case, we have three hunters, and he's got a ship plus one, which means he has four areas that he's going to terrorize this time, this turn. Okay. Okay. And so he can terrorize the skiers on the ski boat, the small fishing boat, the town dock, the teen selling. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, he wants to look at the terror level mm -hmm. on the back of these cards. There's multiples of these, each one of these. There's gonna be a one to three terror that this causes. So you flip it over, this would only cause terror one. Okay. So if the shark's successful on this one, now he doesn't know what's on the back of this, it's one to three, he's gonna get a terror token, okay? okay. Uh, likewise, on this one here, it's one to two. If he terrorizes that one, this one's based on how healthy the shark is. If his health is low, he's gonna do more terror than if oh, his health's okay. not, okay? And the terror here is two to four and two to four. So his best places to attack are gonna be these two places because over here. Because they could here. potentially get four potentially and get, guaranteed at least two. Right, so if yeah. he were to, yeah, he's only gonna terrorize one, but he has the potential to get four terror tokens, okay? Let's just see what he would get, two, okay, Bummer. on that one. do we have a, woo! And two, just two, but he doesn't know that. It's a rough gig for the shark right now. And neither do the hunters. They know he's gonna be out here. Yeah. So you look at, you count the fins here, so he's gonna get two, four, eight, ten fins. So he draws from his bag okay. the fins he's going to get. And he's going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. All right. Now these are all going to not be him. They're simply going to be things that look like him if you're hunting for him, okay? Oh, okay. The ever popular so dolphin, you see, you marlin. See a fin in the water. See a fin. There's even the kid. There's even the kid with fake fins on his back in here, okay? <laughs> yeah, don't we all hate him? You know, <laughs> Do uh, terrorize, terrorizing the beach. Oh no, we hate so him. So basically, yeah, we, I guess uh, not. Okay, we're we good. just want to pull him out of there and take him <laughs> home and give him to his parents, you know. <laughs> So basically, these are the fins he's going to have that he's going to add to his starting to. So he's going to get these, these fins here. He's, yeah. got, he's got all those fins. So the shark player is going to take his fins, and now he's going to put them down on the different locations. Now the other thing the locations are showing you here is how many times that they basically can scout and hunt for him, okay? okay? So they get two here, two here, three here, and two here. Now this is before they actually commit themselves, you know, ultimately to go out. These are other people reporting, we've seen a fin, we haven't seen okay, a fin. Yeah. You know, we think the shark's here. It's, uh, it's fishing boats reporting in, that type of stuff. Because these guys are professional hunters. They don't, they're not yeah. pulling around. Yeah. So now, and I'm limited to what I can do in, in all these locations. So basically, I'm going to end up putting, you know, a couple of fins here and a couple of fins over here let's put some down here you, so you have can, to put you, you put, have to put at least one okay but you can put any amount on there yeah but you have to put at least one on but, every location but you want them spread out because you want the hunters spread out yeah the last thing you want are all the hunters to be in the same location and find you all do right. you want to put more fins in a location where you want like if we if, if as the shark we wanted to go for this one because we thought we might get a four do you want to put more fins here? Does that help? There's them? there's different strategies. It makes it harder for them to find him in the search stage. Yeah. But it makes yeah. but it means more likely that okay when the hunters come out, let's say we had a whole bunch of them piled here and they don't find him in the hunt phase. Okay. Yeah. That means probably more of them are going to appear here mm -hmm. to look for him. All right. Which means if I was smart and put one over here and they didn't get him. I can hunt, I can terrorize without even facing the hunter. Oh, okay. So you're, the goal of the shark is to try and terrorize the, the area he goes to without these guys so catching balance, him. Yeah. Okay. Now he can terrorize, uh, the bottom line is if they catch him, he can't terrorize. Okay. But if he terrorizes, let's say they don't find me and I'm here, yeah. I can terrorize this area and then they attack me because they see me attacking. All yeah. right. So, so it comes down to the combination. So basically, 
each player, and the players are very thematic, they all have their own deck of cards, yeah. which gives them specific abilities. And the cards are either have ships in the top corner or a star in the top corner. So that's if the it's got diver. Right. If, yeah. This is Brenner's deck. So Brenner's deck, and, and his slogan is, well, what's his slogan on there? Uh, i got to get a bigger boat. Yeah, he's going to need a, one. That's a pretty he's famous need line. A okay, boat. He needs a bigger yeah. boat. So he also has a power. So his tr boat track, he has a stronger boat than most people because each character has a boat, and he has four on his. So if the shark starts attacking their boats, the shark can sink them and get a terror point for that. Okay. So, you know, they, fighting them is a good idea unless you happen to be like that. Then it might not be a good idea to actually find the shark. Yeah. So, and he has, they have special abilities for their search and for their fight. They also have cards. Now, if it's got, if it's got uh, the boats up there, it means you can play that to help anybody else who's here. Okay. So you can help the other people. Yeah. If it's got the star, you can only play it on yourself. Okay. And if it's powerful like this one, play it any time, randomly draw one shark card from the shark player and discard it. Basically eliminating one of the shark's power cards. Then you've got to give him a you gotta end up giving him a shark token, which is what he uses to do some special right. abilities. Okay, so that's that's how these cards. So you start with one of these cards and you can get, gain additional cards based on the actions you do each turn. Yeah. All right, so basically once the shark has set the board up for him, each player in player order is going to get to carry out their actions. So they are going to get, uh, they're going to get a couple of actions, and, and, and they establish their actions. Right, Where are my dice? I've got right dice. here. There you go. They're going to roll these dice to see what actions they get. All right, so there's a wild. I can do anything I want. Anything. Okay, out yeah. of the category, which is I can fix my boat. I can draw a card, or I can search out here, okay. one of these locations, which yeah. get a report from somebody. Yeah. Or this is just a search out here. Yeah, so you would just, where you have to be there. No, no, not on these, because I've not gone out to sea yet. Oh, okay. I'm getting reports. Oh, okay. These are people but looking you, you for me. you flip one over, though? You do. So like that. You found, found a, a dolphin. dolphin. All right. Now, the, you might have cards in play, like there's a dolphin trainer that when they find a dolphin, they do damage to the, oh, to the shark, okay? That's good. So there's some good things that happen yeah. out of these things, too, except for that kid with the fin on his yeah. back. You know, that's He's never, never good. good. Now, this is a bad roll because you ended up giving the shark a token. Now, the shark uses oh, okay. these tokens to do special abilities. Okay? Can you change your roll? You can because you start the game. You start the game with a reroll token. Right here, so yeah. I can spin this reroll token to reroll. Uh, any number? Any number. So I might reroll that. Oh, well, that wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the dice hate me. That's what so. we call a waste, right there. Yeah, okay, that's, so that is what we call so, a waste. So, so, or you can just give it to him. But yeah, you have reroll tokens that you can get, and you can also choose to take a reroll token with an action if you don't want to do something else. So, okay. so those so are your you options for, it. for later. Yeah. Right, you save it for later. Now, so on this turn, we've already used this one. And we decide that we want to draw one of Brenner's cards. So we end up drawing this card right here and add it to our hand. I have scientific data. I can actually now cancel a skill card that the shark plays in okay. the future. So yeah. this, one this of just these cards, brought yeah. one of those cards, which are very powerful. They let him killer instinct, rough seas. They let him do all kinds of stuff. They let him tack the boat. Uh, one of the cards you love to get on the shark, I think Brenner's got it. I'm not one of them, I'm not sure, is uh, barrels. Get the hit the shark with barrels, so he's got he's got a harpoon in him with barrels on him, mm -hmm. which slows him down. And the shark can't use any of his fight skills or, or shark cards on you. That's so good. very powerful if you can get that in play. So your cards are powerful, and they come into play once you complete. You get two actions. So we did our two actions, mm -hmm. and and we could have repaired our boat if it was damaged. We could have taken one of these tokens as one if we yeah. wanted to. Now we have to decide where we're actually going. So Brenner takes his ship and he says, you know, I don't think he's here. Lots of sharks there. This is more powerful. I'm going to go here. Mm -hmm. That's the end of Brenner's turn. Okay. Goes to the next player's turn. They're going to roll a dice. They're going to take Same their thing, actions. Yeah. They're ultimately going to go out to a location. So let's say he searches here and he searches. Let's say he rolled. Well, he didn't roll two searches. So uh, let's say he did roll two searches. He searches here again. Now that I've searched twice here, I cannot search again in this area. I just cover oh. that up. I can't, it cannot be searched again. Okay. In other words, the, the boats that are looking for you aren't so finding So if the shark is here. If he's there, you're going to have to go there. 
So let's say that uh, Quinn decides, no, nah, I'm going to let that go too and go over here because there's still just too many that are out. Yeah. All right. So, you know, then the next player would go and then they, they end up out. So let's just say that's where we end up. Yeah. So, so now it comes the resolution phase. We okay. finished our search phase. We did not find him. Now, the great thing is if somebody finds him with one of these, everybody's going to pile on there right. and go after the shark. But now we get to the resolution phase. We always start at the left. We flip it over. Nope, that was just a marlin. Shark's not over here with the skiers. Nope, that's just a seal. Shark's not over there. School of fish, marlin, driftwood, seal. He's not over there. I think I did put him out. Uh, school of fish, driftwood. There, there he is. is. So this guy's found the shark. Now, some of these people will have cards that allow them to move one area. After, so yeah. being next to this, he might be able to get over and get in here. So let's say he does just for the sake of it. Now, even if he doesn't, he's go everybody gets to participate in the shark hunt. Okay. The difference is, if he wasn't there, He's just doing support. He's like on radio support, yeah. okay? And all <laughs> he can coaching him through. Exactly. And if he wins his battle with the shark, all he does is he gets to draw one of his cards. Yeah. If he loses the battle with the shark, the shark gets a token. So he's not in high stakes. He's not gonna get his boat damaged. Yeah. Now this guy, he's going head to head with the shark. We know how that goes in the movie. They take the shark, they it take the boat down. Work right? out well for well, the no, person. it doesn't it doesn't come out well. So now <laughs> we're gonna change and we're gonna go to combat. And there's a combat, the combat system essentially is you have a, a hand of cards colored and 11 is the high number in this deck. It goes 1 through 11 and there's some specialty cards. There's the 1 which is considered the harpoon. Hunters may discard this card and one face up shark in their battle. So there, there's shark cards in here too. And, sharks and, and who has this in their hand? The dealer will have this in their hand. Okay. All right, and it plays as it plays a lot like 21. Okay, in okay. other words, you want to get as close as you can to, to 23, 23 and okay. not go over it. If you go over it, you're defeated. All right. That's not good. The shark always wins ties, but more importantly for this shark is these shark cards. When a shark card comes up on you, it doubles the value. Okay, that is previously de dealt okay. to you. But so for I, the shark, if you get two shark cards, if the shark gets two shark cards on him, so he immediately wins. Well, that's a 10 right now. But if the shark had, let's say the shark had this on him, and he had the 10, and he gets another shark card, his special ability is anytime the shark gets two shark cards, he wins the battle against everybody, no matter what. Just bang, that's it. Chomped. Now against the players, Shark cards will do damage to them at the end, will do additional damage to their boat at the end, which mm -hmm. means if they have shark cards on them and lose, their boat's probably going to sink. That's brutal. Right, because he had brutal. directly attached the shark. So the way it works is, you want to be the shark, you want to be Brenner. I'll be the shark. All right, you are the shark. Here we go. So as a shark, uh, you have, where do we put his card? You have two fight, okay? Fight. You have that much damage, and your fight ability is represented with cubes. All right. I have 10 damage. Yeah, let's we'll say you can take 10 damage. We're only going to do one round, so there's no way I can, I can knock you down anyway. Okay, Brenner, on the other hand, Brenner has two fight also. All right, now what fight does is if I don't like the card that's dealt to me, I can get another one, okay, by simply discarding my fight card. So we're going to set the shark. Set him. We would do this for every player that's in the game. We're going to put that one face up. We're going to put that one face up, okay? Now, you're going to look at your face down. You're the shark. You're always basically going to go last. I'm going to look at my face down. Your face down card cannot change, okay? Uh, you, can't, you can't do anything to that. So, so I want to get as close to 23 without going over. Exactly. Okay. And you win all ties. Keep in mind, as a shark, you're going to win all ties. Okay. So Brunner looks at his hand and says, yeah, I want to take a card. You're going to only get one card on your turn, and it's going to continue to go around the table. Okay. Unlike, uh, a, say, a game of uh, blackjack, if you bust, you don't reveal it in this game. Okay? You just cannot take any more cards. Yeah. So, Brunner gets a five. So what's showing here is basically he's got a 13 showing. Now, you've got a 10 showing, and you basically are out. Now, once you're out, you stop. But now you're the shark. You could say, I'm going to take one, 
I will and if you don't like it, discard this and get another one. But you, but you have to keep taking, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're not trusting of that, huh? No. Okay. I'm good. Everybody at home knows what she's got, right? I didn't look, so I'm not sure. So I'm gonna say I got, I got 13 showing. I'm gonna take one. I've got 18. All right. So I'm gonna stop at eight. I'm gonna stop at 18. You've got 21, yep. which would be really good if we were playing blackjack. It would, but, but we're going to I feel like that's close. We're going to 23, though, right? I know, yeah. All right. Unfortunately, I've got a harpoon down there, so I've only got 19, so you win this battle. So what happens is she would damage my boat, which is undamaged, and then since she won the battle, she will terrorize by attacking these teens that are sailing, yeah. and she would score two terror points. Adding them to her to her thing over here. Yeah. In the wild, you can never put anywhere. So the bottom line is, once you're at the end of that battle, you're going to collect all the stuff. You got to start a new round. There's going to be a new search area. Yeah. You're going to buy new cards. They're going to get new skills. They're going to repair their boats. They're going to go out hunting for you again. So as the game goes on, the sharks going to be coming down in power. Yeah. And you're going to be hunting. I'm going to be hunting. You're going to be going after I'm that shark. I'm going to get it. And so it creates a very active, tense battle game. It's a lot of fun when everybody's got a lot of cards, you're looking around. It's especially fun when the specialty, like if that had come out, uh, you know. That would have been fun. That would have been nice uh, if I'd gotten you know, two of those. It, it, gets, it, it, it can get very, very interesting. They're, they're, or you could have had the heat of battle card come up. If this gets dealt to you, you cannot. You have to make a decision right then that you're either holding or taking another card. Yeah. You're either staying in the battle or leaving the battle. Yeah. So, you know, you make that commitment early a lot of times and not knowing what that next card is right, going to be. Right, yeah. But you do have control. Brenner could have fought off that five, taken another card. He could have fought off that one, knowing that he needed to get higher. Yeah. And that's where the active game, once his five tokens are gone, then then it's out. But a yeah. lot of the, lot of interaction, the shark might have had one that canceled these five tokens or, you know, did other things to him. So there's a lot of different things going on. What I tried to do in the game is make it to where we have a lot of action. We have this searching and this a quick, lot of action, yeah. and then a lot of action, and then we move on to the next round. So about how many rounds does this game last usually? The, uh, on the average, it's going to go about six rounds, you know, maybe seven. Okay. It, it depends, but but mo if, if the shark's doing any terrorizing at all, you know, he's going to get a lot. Yeah. If, if he's not doing any terrorizing, they're going to be killing him. So, you know, they're, they, he, he can... He can munch on a few dolphins and improve his health some, but he can't get health back too easily. Mm -hmm. So realistically, the game forces itself forward. Down, so, yeah. Down so, the path, either right. the shark's getting damaged or terror is happening. Right. Yeah. So, so basically, there, there are a number of different strategies, and it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of co cooperation between the group out here that's looking. Right. Are you taking this? Are you taking that? Right. There's a lot of strategy in how they search and where they locate themselves yeah. on... You know, do they have cards? Some guys are better fighters than other guys. You know, you've got the crazy sailor who'll just ram his boat into him, okay? If he's got the right cards in his hand, if the shark hits his boat, he'll ram the shark, okay, and do damage to him. So there's all this different stuff that's taking place. It's just a lot of fun, I think. So this is a prototype copy. This is a prototype um, copy. You like my prototype what stuff? I do. I always love your prototypes. So when, um, if people are looking forward to this game, where, what can they do? Is it's going to be coming. It's going to be coming out next year from Upper Deck. It's got. They've been doing beautiful artwork. They have a banner back there in the back. It's going to be. You know, it's going to make this look like nothing because it's just so fantastic. So ETA next year? Do we know what time? I think it'll be out. I'm assuming Origins Gen Con next year, somewhere, okay. somewhere in there. Uh, I don't have the exact date, so I can't tell you. You're it'll just definitely be out by Gen Con. You know, I, I would love it to be definitely. out right you now because I like to play it. So. <laughs> well, you get to play it. You have this prototype. No, they have my only prototype. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this was with them. I, I, so I'm having to reacquaint myself with okay. it at this point. So that is Shark Island coming out by Upper Deck next year, designed by Richard Lanius. And, and don't go in the water unless you've got a bigger boat. <laughs> Always get a bigger boat. Exactly. Yeah. My name's Liv. We'll see you later. <laughs> We're always live. We are always live. What? I'm sorry? Oh. Oh. Peter. Pete, yeah, Pete, Pete Shirey. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned sorry. him early, so hopefully yeah. Pete Shirey, definitely you see him through this. Nobody loves sharks like Pete Shirey.